This is taken at the three. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Second down, they'll try and run the counter. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved him and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. They'll set up a throw. Quick hitter here. It's complete. That throw good for four. It's second down. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. They'll look to throw here. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here in third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Their dangerous wide receiver. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams add on to their lead. And on this play, he just made a great route. The quarterback had to deliver it, sure, but a great route run there. And, Brandon, this is what the best receivers do. They work on their route running because it's one thing to have athletic ability, but to really get open, you have to set up defensive backs with different routes and be precise in your cuts. And the lead is up to 18 now. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here's the Giants' offense now getting set to start the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. 
try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. It'll go as a gain of seven on the play, and it sets up a third and inches situation. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Ah, uh, yes, this is where the expression staying ahead of the chains comes into play. Good runs like that one set you up well for third down. job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage they'll lose a yard and it brings up third with the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today they've got to think about changing up their play calling some screens some draws some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game you don't totally abandon it but you try and give it a little bit of help and on third down a nickel formation here defensively Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he can't come up with a pick. Nearly his second of the game. Instead, fourth down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. And the Giants send out their punter now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. offense. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer.
Another pistol look here. He'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down at four now. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. He's got time. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Here comes the Rams punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. They try and bring the pressure, but he still gets off a good one. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, when you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. quickly here and that's complete only three yards on the catch it's third down I know many people like to throw to the tight end maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size the slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness their speed and their route running savvy looking to jam the receivers at the line here press coverage look defensively On third down, he'll drop to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. Pass the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. A big play there. 78 yards. And the Giants are able to draw a bit closer. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? <laughs> just go long, Backyard. man. Backyard. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. And that one makes this an 11-point deficit now. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. The kicking team out there for the Giants as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So they complete the pass, and now they Watch face a second down. They're going to look to throw. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away, and now it's third. Here 
here's a play fake as they set up to throw to the sideline and oh, that's well done able to drag the feet he's going to have the first down and that's how you pick up a first down not only does he make the catch but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done so the offense has it first and ten They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now a handoff here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Second five. And they'll run it here. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. The previous play was a nice run, so they came back with the draw. I think they were trying to fool the defense into thinking they would throw the ball and wanted to run it again. Unsuccessful, but this team is definitely showing they want to keep it on the ground. Out of the gun now on third down. Defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up four. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit high. They feel like they got something going and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. Let's go, Peter! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and can serve as much as possible. They'll look to throw here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but 
for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And now a first down following that long game. They'll set up to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. He'll look to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Second down now after the pass completion. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. They'll drop to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Call it a gain of five, and it'll be third down. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Back to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him, that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there. That's winning football. And his kick here is good. And that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Giants defense working their way back onto the field now. They're hoping to do what they did last time, force another punt. Last time it resulted in a field goal. We'll see if they can get another stop here, though. And the best defenses are in the business of preventing points and creating points. And that's exactly what these guys did on their last possession. Why? Because they got off the field on three and out, turned the ball over to their offense after the punt, and let them roll downfield and put the ball through the post for a field goal. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position. The guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front has eaten up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. Back to throw now on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. <laughs> And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 16 on the pickup, and it'll be a Los Angeles first down. 
I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he will find his man on the outside. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Defensive back in the game now, here for third and four. He'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. The 13 yards that time and a first. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver, his second touchdown of the night. And the Rams add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Point after here, coming up. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And New York set to take the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Five receivers in the game, four of them to the left side. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Third down, he'll drop to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40-yard line. Simple slant route, and partner, really nice hard throw by the quarterback. Nice timing between the quarterback and the receiver. They were perfectly in sync, and he put it right on him on the inside route. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. It's a four-receiver look to the right side. 
They'll look to throw here on first down. And there's that man again. It's complete. It'll go as a gain of 12. And it'll be first down Giants. Quick pass play there on the slant. Charles works out well for the offense. The offense loves it. The defender hates it. Hard to get through the body of the receiver to get to the football trying to cover a slant. All right, here we go. Three, nine, ten. They'll look to throw now on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets him a new set of downs. And here comes play number six on this drive. Here we go now. Three, 19. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Surveying the field. Looking left side, he's got it complete. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. A lot of time there, partner, in the protected pocket, and he was able to deliver. The guys protecting the passer have allowed him plenty of time to go through his progressions and find open receivers. there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down that was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch he was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off back to throw now on second and ten toward the sideline and look at that catch dragging the toes and that's going to be a first down well done all right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty. Yep. Wiley. Oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it, has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. readies for play number 10 of this series. They come out here in the yard. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. Man, not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. So the offense a little antsy. The flag comes out and a five-yard penalty. They gotta have six here. It's third and goal. They come up in an offset eye. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And he's got it. Touchdown, Giants. Their big bodied receiver with his second touchdown of the night. And the Giants are able to cut into this lead. So they lob it up on the fade and really a great play to go up and make that catch. It's something that it takes some timing and people work on it all the time. Even when they're just warming up, you know, that old pat and go when they're just warming up and throwing the football. A lot of the time it turns into that route exactly. A fade route and this one turned into a touchdown. And now in a nine point game, they'll still just need to go for one here. As this gets them back within a touchdown and a two point conversion. 
That one in the books as a 12th play drive. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. The kicking team out there for the Giants as they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. The Giants defense getting ready to go here. Last drive, touchdown, surrender. Here, see if they can stop them. It's always a constant battle of letting the last series go, good or bad, but especially bad. Give up a touchdown. Okay, forget the finger pointing, forget the blame. Go back out and play the defense you know you're capable of and help your team out. And probably look to the leaders, as always. As always. <laughs> they're they're going to be the ones going to grab some people and say, all right, let's do this thing. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. And he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. And the play clock's running down. They'll set up to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Fourth quarter, two-minute warning about to hit, and it looks like they're going to get one more play in. It'll be interesting to see what they try and do on this play. Do they try and take a shot, or do they just try and get to the two-minute warning? So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Fresh set of downs here. And he'll give it here to his running back. Oh, look at that. And now the Giants will stop playing. They take a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Going to give this time to the tailback. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. And now the Giants, they get the officials' attention and take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a handoff here to his running back. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. He's had a big game tonight, and while no one's going to be overly concerned about that last play, you also know that the offense coordinator does not want to see that happen again. They want to get back to doing what they've been doing all game long.
A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not in a premium. They were pretty <laughs> easy to come by. They were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game. They also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gawden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night, everybody.